Hey folks, Tyler Edlin here. Going to show you a little process for I painted a Baby Yoda over the holiday. Hope everyone's doing well. Going to talk about some of the prep work I did, all the planning versus what I didn't plan, and then again how I executed that. We'll get in a little bit about color, lighting schemes, and finishing it. So let's go. So what you see up on screen now is basically my preliminary sketch that I did and then my color rough. And so before I really dive into loads of referencing, any kind of research, 3D or whatever the case may be, I like to have a basic sketch for what my idea is going to be. I want this image to be super simple. I'm going to kind of challenge myself with this because I a, usually don't try to portray or paint cute things and I don't usually keep images kind of small and intimate like this. I go for these sprawling sort of landscapes and uh, environments usually so I'm stepping out of my comfort zone and we'll see how this uh, and we'll see how this treats me as a result. So right at this first stage the sketch nothing pretty the color rough nothing pretty but they both serve their purpose the the, the line is figuring out my composition the the overall flow of it and a lot of the rhythms now what the color is resolving is a bit of that lighting which we're going to talk about next here but basically the two of these steps combined took about 20 minutes so that's about 20 minutes of planning and what i was aiming to achieve with this color pass or color rough was to set up a basic three-point lighting system now a three-point lighting system for those that don't know it's a fairly common technique in cinema in photography it's not fixed or standard it's more like a simple guide on how to position certain lighting now of course the colors that I choose for these lights and the placement on them can drastically affect the mood and that the overall vibe that this gives so let's go over some of these basics I'll be talking about now the key light sets up the light of the scene it is the primary light source basically it sets the overall exposure of the scene. Is it going to be a light image or is it going to be a dark image? Maybe a both. Maybe it will be a full range of contrast. Maybe it'll be low. The next major aspect is the fill light. Now think of this as something that just it's a secondary light source and it helps shape the scene and bring out the mood. It often softens and balances that primary light source, the key light. The third point which is often fairly optional but I always like the look of it is the is the backlight sometimes people consider this a rim lighting but it really just helps define the form from another sort of perspective or angle now when these all work together the goal would be that they create a nice dimensional character little baby Yoda here once I completed the color rough that's gonna kinda guide the rest of the decisions that I'm making in an illustration like this and in making these design decisions, each one that I make affects the overall picture, and each one affects the next decision that comes afterwards. Everything is tied together for better or worse. So it does help understanding again why the light or color may do one thing, you know, versus the next. When we understand it, then we can make more deliberate and intentional decisions. But with this image, as I'm showing here, I used uh, a bunch of 3D kit bash pieces that I had, just generic sort of hard surface pieces. I just like to grab a bunch of them, kind of toss them around the scene, and then drop a light on them. That'll just kind of help guide a little bit of the shapes and the lighting. Uh, because in my original sketch, something I didn't do was design any of the background out. I just put a few lines to suggest the movement. And what this 3D will do will just give me a base to paint over. Depending on the look of course you're going for with an illustration, you could just use 100% of that 3D reference, or you could do what I do, you could just paint over it entirely. So early on, I like to make sure my values are absolutely working. That is probably the number one thing I see loads of students and less experienced artists do. The color sketch originally really helps me figure and sort that out on a color level. I basically know I'm going to go with a complementary color scheme. I'm going to go for mostly oranges with a hint of red, 
and on the opposite side of that I will be going with blues. The blues are mostly neutralized. They're very satura uh, they're very desaturated and they're occupying most of the shadow spaces. Having consistent color theory in an illustration like this is absolutely imperative to being successful. Often uh, illustrations can tend to look a bit flat in the color department if there's not enough separation and transitions between warm and cool colors. Often enough, it's these subtle changes and shifts in color temperature that can make or break a painting. It can separate it from looking extremely flat or filling it filled with life and subtlety. There's not an exactly a mathematical formula to that. It's, it's something more that you gotta feel out. But basically with light sources, you need to know if one's gonna be warm, one's gonna be cool, and, and maintain that throughout and also have the opposite uh, color temperature for the shadows. So on the right side, my key light, warm light, it's going to have cooler shadows by comparison. Likewise, I have a fill light and a rim light that are both cooler. The shadows based on that area will be tending to go a little bit more warm. I'm not saying I'm going to load up with very warm or intense colors. They just need to feel warmer than the light source or cooler than the light source if I'm going from the uh, right side because color is all relative. When I'm using all these light sources together, these three primary keys, essentially it's going to add for a, it's going to make for a nice dimensional sort of character. It's really going to bring out the shapes and the forms in and around them. So one basic kind of core principle that I'm trying to make sure I get across here is that light will determine where the texture is meaning in the shapes of the light sources primarily on that warm side that's where i'm going to emphasize that te te the texture of the character's little uh, garb that he's wearing the, fl the fluff and the fur you know around the collar and maybe a little bit more of the wrinkles in his face where i'm going to simplify a lot of those uh, textural cues toward the shadows the shadows i let describe the form and I try to keep it just the form and that form will be described as I said by the fill in ambient light I think because this image is overall very simple in regards to how I'm staging it it should be fairly clear and, and simple enough that I'm communicating this is a, a, you know, a very simple setup now myself and loads of his students, you tend to run into a problem the more complex an image it tends to be. There's more to juggle, there's more to design, there's more to balance. One thing I know I'm going to have to come back and fix toward the end is bringing about those lights a little bit. Overall this is a very low key scene. Uh, the, the core shadows are or the core value of the entire scene is somewhere around 70 percent and again I have some light accents and some that go up even higher but I have to make those light accents I think push a little bit further if I want to make uh, some of the uh, the light in this be a little bit more readable so one tool I can't recommend enough is this selection tool Photoshop has a handful of them in different ways to utilize it I usually just use that free transform make a selection use big brush strokes within the selection. The selection is what controls it. Then the other element or the other primary technique you often see me doing here is I will, I will then grab a smudging tool and kind of soften some and parts of the edges where there's a form change. A lot of what I'm doing here at this stage is, is I'm fine tuning. You saw me I had to adjust the ear, I had to make subtle shifts in the actual anatomy, doing lots of pushing and a little bit of pulling here and there, so, subtly starting to nudge it into the direction I want. Nothing really drastically has changed, but it, it just kind of needed to happen. The other major change I'm going to try to implement here is to add a little bit of canvas space on uh, the right side of it and shorten it on the left. He ended up just kind of getting a little too far off to the right uh, for what I was aiming for. But again, that's a simple, easy shift. So see, you can see what I was mentioning earlier here. I'm really pushing that textural information where that direct light source is hitting him. And then I'm just kind of fading that off gradually toward the shadows as it's not as relevant, way too important. If I maximized equal texture and clarity throughout light and shadow, again, that is another element that would flatten the image. It's picking and choosing my battles. 
I'm finally zooming in now, is, or I'd say at this later stage here, that I'm actually fine-tuning things and getting a little bit more detail work. I really avoided loads of details up to this point, which is why I put off elements and shapes like the nose and I guess even that little hand you know, behind him there to later. They just weren't as important as the whole global scheme of the picture, so I kind of saved that for last. I'm kind of simplifying and adding a few distinguishable cut shapes into the background uh, and then adding the last bit of you know, light that I want to push and reinforce on his cheek here before I go into some of like the post-processing sort of uh, finishing elements. But yeah, I'm always trying to vary up my brushwork. Some brush strokes will be hard and, and firm, some will have a little bit more texture, some get soft, and some get a little bit more noisy. So what I like to do before I finalize an image and uh, walk away, I go into Levels, Adjustments in Photoshop, and I adjust the sliders to see if I can get a little bit more accuracy, maybe I need to control certain elements or emphasize different aspects of light, which I'm doing here, because I know the whole image was a little on the dark side. Walking away, coming back gave me that fresh perspective on it, so I can very easily you know, go into levels and then just add very incrementally the adjustments that I do need. So in this case, I, I kind of livened everything up a little bit. I pushed the tonal range for the highlights just a bit more, and now I'm masking off some of those changes so that I can es essentially just utilize that shift in various uh, areas, because I didn't I didn't prefer to have it adjust everything. So see, what's really cool about these, you can adjust individual color channels like red and green, and you can, you know, add a little bit of that color into the shadows, a little bit of color into the highlights, and it's a really cool way to just fine tune the last bits of this. So see, I, I by lightening everything up though, I lost information in the shadows, so I'm getting that back here. But thanks for watching. Hey folks, I just set this up. I wanted to let you know if you enjoyed my content, if you want something a little bit more meaty, a little bit more full length, you can head over to my website, brushsawstudio.com. I added the newsletter tab. You click that, you sign up for information on my sales, availability, events, uh, mentorships, whatever the case may be. But if you just sign up, you get a free complimentary tutorial. This one itself is 90 minutes. It includes lectures, demonstrations. It's a bit more thorough than what you had here today. And later this year, I'll be offering more free assets and resources, exercise packs, brushes, more to come. So you don't want to miss anything. Until then, subscribe if you like the content and do take care.